Thank you for joining this afternoon. The session today is the first of two. There's one next week as well um, that, unless things change, will be identical to this one. So uh, you don't need to come to next week. Um, uh, we are looking today at flexible bus service data in BODS and some proposals about how that can be supported in a uh, more sustainable way than it currently is. Uh, I'm Tim Rivett. I am uh, doing this work on behalf of the Department for Transport. Um, I am recording this, by the way, uh, so that for those people that can't make either today or next week's session, uh, they can uh, still uh, get the benefit of what's uh, presented and said. Um, so what's the problem with BODS and flexible services? Um, so at the moment, the BODS service only supports fixed route and fixed timetables. Uh, that's a bit of a problem as there's more increased use of flexible non-fixed network services. Um, every local authority uh, in a survey uh, a couple of years ago had some form of flexible service, demand responsive, uh, community transport type arrangement. Um, and increasingly for transport authorities, it's regarded as core network uh, and so uh, that increases the problem with it not being in BODS. KPMG uh, a couple of years ago now um, carried out a discovery project and some of you will have been involved in that I know uh, looking at the the scope of the problem uh, and uh, some ideas about uh, how it might be addressed um one of the key challenges that we need to overcome is awareness of flexible demand responsive services because uh, for those of you that operate them you'll know that they're uh, quite expensive to run and we need increased take up to make them more viable and sustainable um, otherwise they're going to come and go they're being increasingly used partly because the department is encouraging them through rural funds and bus service improvement plans, but also as the normal standard historic fixed network becomes less uh, sustainable. Um, and at the moment, if you just consumed BODS data, then put it into a journey planner you would find that large parts of the country are public transport no-go zones, which is not correct. And so therefore, uh, BODS and the DFT are keen to uh, work out a way to make flexible services available in BODS to try and solve that uh, problem and help people actually understand that there is public transport available for them. So um, one of the challenges that we've got with flexible services are that there are as many definitions and variations on the theme as there are services. Everything seems to have uh, a slightly different take on something. Um, and calls themselves something different. So uh, flexible services, demand responsive, dialer ride, flexi bus, Uber style, you know, the, the names uh, are many and varied, um, but fundamentally uh, they all um, come down to a few broad categories. So totally flexible, uh, with no fixed route and timetable, some bit of part, flexible with part, uh, fixed and 
Uh, there are some out there that's a fixed route, but it only runs if it's been booked in advance. Um, there are, like the, the approaches to operation, many different types of booking process for them. And fundamentally, they all need some form of booking because otherwise, if you stood on straight, you know, it would never come. Um, some of them um, you can book within a very short space of time. Some of the people that we've been talking to uh, recently, you know, 10 minute look ahead. If there's a bus available and it can come and pick you up, it can be there uh, as rapidly uh, as a taxi. Um, but some you have to book the previous day. Sometimes, you know, um, it's the same day, um, but. Uh, everything has a slightly different approach um, and there's a whole range of different ways of booking these things from phone calls to app based and sometimes you have to uh, talk to the driver uh, either of your previous trip or the the one that uh, that you're on and we'll come on to that um, later on um so the problem that BODS has got is at the moment there's a lack of uh, an agreed approach um, and so therefore uh, operators and system suppliers have come up with a number of different ways of getting uh, flexible service data into BODS but fundamentally um, they all have some form of uh, timetable um, that is a sample or notional, you know, somebody's made something up um, and uh, it's got some notes associated with it. And those notes are really important um, because actually that's the bit that says uh, it must be booked in advance. Um, it's a bit of a guess, approximate, um, whatever it says. Um, but notes aren't often presented in the uh, end consumer systems. Uh, and journey planners, they understand what a timetable is and they can't interpret a note particularly. And so therefore they take the, the, the sample timetable that's been created as gospel and plan people on it and don't always tell them that it's got to be booked in advance. And so uh, there's reports of uh, increasing numbers of customers complaining when they're stood somewhere and, and a bus doesn't turn up because they've not booked it. Um, so um, what we have tried to do is come up with a way to enable flexible service data to be provided to BODS in a consistent uh, standardised way. Um, the first thing that we've had to do is define what a flexible bus service is given there are so many different variations of, of naming and approaches. But fundamentally, if a flexible bus service uh, is registered with the Traffic Commissioner as a flexible service, then we aim to be able to support that in what we've come up with. Um, that does mean that even if it's not registered, most service types are going to be supportable because fundamentally they, they operate along similar principles. Um, but I am aware that because there are so many different approaches and ways of designing and operating these services, there are some out there that we may not have uh, come across uh, and therefore might need a bit more thinking about how they can be supported um, and there might be some out there that we can't support full stop. Um, but that's why we're going through this um, consultation process. So uh, my first ask to people really is um, if you run a service or have got customers of your software that run services that you think that's a particularly different way of running it, you know, very atypical, then please do let me know so that uh, I can try and make sure that it's supported um, and I can provide advice about how it would fit within the structures. 
So um, what we've tried to do with the data is make it as simple as possible for people, because we know that in a lot of cases, the uh, operations for these services are carried out by very small organisations, don't have a lot of uh, technology in some cases, in others they have a vast array of it. Um, but fundamentally, we've tried to make it as simple as possible. And it boils down to needing to know the area that it covers, either the stops or the, the zones, the areas, um, when it operates and how to book it. Uh, and so those three bits of information um, we found on every leaflet and website and um, app that we have uh, looked at. So uh, we think that that should be information that everybody has got, at least at that sort of uh, textual level. Uh, in terms of other data sets, when we're talking about um, BODs um, for location data, there's no current plans to expect uh, AVL, the location data, for flexible services to be provided. Um, it's not as though uh, it's very easy to create a prediction given the flexibility and even just having a bus running around on a map showing you where it is isn't always particularly helpful for people because it might be on the next road to you but before it gets to you it might spend half an hour wandering off doing other things so um, there are no current plans to expect AVL uh, for fares it's important to understand that and know that and so uh, the fares uh, project is uh, looking at that and uh, I think they uh, have already uh, got what's needed uh, within the profile to support fares for flexible services. So um, if we look at, move on now to look at the types of service at a general level that we are trying to support and we know we can, um, we start off with the most simple, which is a flexible zone, a bus will go from anywhere to anywhere within a uh, within an area um, and that's definable as a polygon. So it doesn't have to be a square or a triangle or anything. It can be as flexible as you need. Uh, uh, but fundamentally, uh, it's a typical uh, demand responsive pick up and drop off anywhere that's requested. Then um, there's a slightly more um, processed version where you could pick up uh, a number of fixed locations and go to anywhere within a zone and vice versa. Typically, this is a service that might pick people up from from a village or a group of villages to the nearest train station or supermarket, um, that sort of thing, and then um, pick people up from uh, that defined location and take them back to wherever they came from. Then um, we've got any to any, so uh, it'll operate within a number of zones uh, and it'll pick up right, from the supermarket or the rail station and take people back to um, a number of zones, uh, but it operates uh, very flexibly and it will go in any direction or stop at any of these um, areas or, or points uh, in any order. And um, finally, for the full for these sort of things is a mix where um, you've got a service that has a part fixed route, fixed timetable element, and then um, either at the end or the beginning or in the middle, it will go off and you know drop people off and pick people up uh, out of an area, um, depending on what's booked. Um, and there's a few, there's an increasing number of these that are being uh, put into place uh, around the place for you know the the bits of um, areas where 
um, it's not financially viable to have a traditional service, but um, other parts of a service uh, do uh, have enough patronage to, to be able to be uh, sustainable. So those are the the sort of the the flexible stuff that we're looking at. There is a special um, category. Um, various people talk about this as the sort of the Hotel California type um, service where um, if you're on the bus or you've pre-booked it, it'll drop you off um, at a village. But if it's not booked, then it'll just sail past and not go into it um, and drop people off. So you can drop off. Um, but if you're um, stood there um, waiting for the for the vehicle to arrive, um, you're never going to leave unless you've uh, you've pre-booked it. So sometimes that's in the middle, um, and sometimes that's at the end or the beginning. Um, and um, whilst the flexible service proposal supports this, uh, it's a bit heavy-handed for. Um, just a stop in the middle of a route and so there is a proposal that uh, comes up with a way of managing this in a slightly different way that's hopefully easier for people to uh, to, to code up and support because there's quite a lot of services like this. So those are the sort of services that we're looking to um, support. So what we've come up with is a uh, transit exchange profile based on the current BODS transit exchange profile that for handling um, flexible services. So I'm just going to run through um, quickly um, the key data elements in there. <coughs> At the moment, if you supply data for a uh, a normal stopping service, uh, regular service, you don't need to do anything with service classification. But um, if it's a flexible service, then you need to provide a flexible service classification. Um, that's mandated in the schema. Um, if you've got a service that's got some uh, fixed elements and some flexible elements, then you still need to flag it as a flexible uh, service classification. Um, flexible services, uh, a lot of the transit exchange data structures um, are well, hopefully very familiar to you um, if you're providing uh, regular service data. Um, the origin and destinations and things like that um, are all um, reused um, and so existing systems should be able to support those elements um, pretty easily. Um, a regular service has to have at least one journey pattern so um, that tells you where it goes and the timetable and things like that. A flexible service needs to have at least one flexible journey pattern um, and within that flexible journey pattern um, you've got all the standard common stuff about who's operating the service and the origin and destination and things like that um, but um, underneath that you've got um, two bits of information one is where it stops uh, and picks up and the other one are the booking arrangements. Um, because BODS uses Trans Exchange 2.4, um, it's worth raising the uh, issue that um, previous versions, so Trans Exchange 2.1 and before, which have been quite widely used um, over the years, had a different way of um, identifying where uh, flexible services stopped both zones and fixed stop points um, we're not using those because they're depreciated um, and I realize that for some software systems this will cause a need to do some development but if we look forward to um, 
what might happen you know, even in five years time um, if we're using Trans Exchange 2.5 or NetEx, um, then uh, if you start to use the uh, the these new structures, then you'll be in a much better position and it will be easier to support things going forward. So um, given this will be new for a lot of people, it's worth getting used to the new arrangements and using them um, at this point. So uh, we are going to be using uh, flexible stop usage and fixed stop usage. Um, and what that enables us to do, um, if you want to uh, dig into the XML, is really quite simply um, just have a single zone. It's effectively just a single um, bus stop area um, that it calls at. Um, if you want to get more complicated um, because the service you know, might start off doing some couple of fixed stops, you know, visit the uh, the shop and the church, and then go off into um, a flexible zone, pick people up and drop people off and wherever they booked, um, and then finish off, um, ending up at um, a uh, a village centre further on. Then you can define that um, using a set of sequences which you can use to. Uh, define the the order that things are going to visit in, and so um, hopefully you can start to see how um, you can already from this um, start to handle um, zones and um, some of the you know the mixed case things where you you know drop off and pick up at a railway station, and then go into a zone and things like that. Um, so once you've defined um, where the bus is going, you need to let people know the booking arrangements. Um, and so um, perhaps the most important field on here, it is mandated in the schema, um, so you're going to have to provide it, is the description um, that um, tells people at a, at a high level uh, you know some textual information about the booking arrangements. Um, a for those of you that are um, in Wales and need to provide things in Welsh, uh, this description field uh, is one of the many in Trans Exchange that supports language attribute, and so you can have an English version and a Welsh version uh, provided. Um, aside from the the textual description. Um, you need to uh, provide information on, you know, is there a phone number? What is it? What's the email address if you're accepting email inquiries? Um, if you're uh, allowing postal um, booking and there are some out there that do, then, you know, where do people send that? And um, for most people they will these days have some form of web address um what's the website for booking um what's the um you are you know where where do you download the app from and things like that now there is a challenge here um it's covered in the profile document um trans exchange only supports a single web address in this case um, and uh, inevitably, if it's an app based uh, booking service, then you're going to have an app that supports uh, Android and another one that supports Apple. Uh, and so um, you're going to need to have a web page somewhere that provides all of the links to those app stores. You can't, unfortunately, add a link for the Android and a, and a link for the Apple um, within this. Um, it's one of the um, slight restrictions. Um, BODs will need you to provide at least one of these forms of booking. So you'll have to provide phone, email address or web address. Um, you can't have uh, none of them. Um, and finally, um, if you have restrictions on the bookings that you take, 
um for the service then there's a there's a flag um to help people understand whether there might be restrictions for that um so that's covers where the service goes how you book it and then um you can uh, provide the information about um when it operates so um does it operate all day um does it only operate you know monday to friday um does it operate different times of the day so you know, some of these services will operate you know, 9.30 till 12, then there'll be a bit of a lunch break and it'll restart at two o'clock until half three, something like that. You can provide all of that um, along with you know, saying whether it operates on bank holidays and things like that. Um, so in a very similar way to um, you can for a standard service. Um, but the service periods rather than having to provide a timetable you're saying you know we will operate within this time window and that helps journey planners understand you know if if there's a lunch break in the service and you're arriving at the train station at 12 30 actually there's quite a long time to wait potentially um you might not be able to get something that links up um as tightly as you might want to so that's um the uh key bits of data for standard flexible service. Um, I said that we were thinking of a slightly different way for uh, handling these on-demand stops where the bus will go off into a village and drop somebody off if they've got onto a bus. Um, this sort of arrangement or you know, carry on to the next village um, beyond the, the fixed timetable um, route aspect. So um, at the moment, there's quite a lot of these being provided in uh, into BODs. Um, they all use within the trans exchange um, some notes that say, you know, it's only going to take you there if you've requested it from the driver. Um, unfortunately, um, because BODs also says that um, notes are optional and um, notes shouldn't use um, contain data that you can describe, uh, contain contents that you can describe as, as you know, as data and machine readable. Um, a lot of systems um, are ignoring the notes and so they just appear, this data just appears in a journey planner just like a normal um bus stop would and so uh, that's causing a number of complaints um and so notes aren't presented but also um a lot of the data consumers aren't honoring where it says set down only um at the moment and so it's being presented as though you can get a vehicle from that location um a lot of that is because um the uh, the BODs converters that produce the GTFS format data um, can't um, support some of the uh, some of the options that are available in GTFS that would overcome this because there's just not enough data um, being provided. You know, if it says set down, it can't read the notes to understand what's in the notes to know that actually um, you could usefully use one of the things that's in GTFS. Um, you know, you've got to phone the agency to arrange a pickup or you've got to sort it out with the driver. Um, useful things that most of the consuming systems actually can understand, but they're just not getting the data because it's not being provided to uh, bonds in the right way. So, um because you could use this um and provide this is a flexible bit of service but that's pretty overkill um if it's just for a stop or two so the proposal is to make a minor update to the trans exchange schema um one just one file um within that the journey support 
uh, XSD um, and add in um, two options, pick up driver request and set down driver request. Um, if we do that, of course, there's got to be some education for data consumers because they're going to need to use activity, um, but it will allow the GTFS exports to uh, be able to use this data and present it properly in GTFS. Um, and so there's a better chance of things being uh, presented properly, but we are going to have to do some education as well. Um, so as you might imagine, um, there are some uh, challenges in what we've come up with. Um, and so we think that the key risks are that when you come back to us uh, with your feedback from the consultation, we've got it pretty wrong somewhere along the line and it's going to need some significant rework. Fair enough. Hands up if that's the case. We'll do that. Um, the flexible service um, structures in Trans Exchange, they're not particularly well supported in some of the systems that you might have. Um, some suppliers do support it, but not everybody. So there's some development work to do. Um, the, um, the most challenging, I think, um, will be um, the fact that um, not all of the bus stop management systems that authorities use support flexible zones and flexible stops, FLX type stops, um, and authorities will need to create those um, before bus operators can use them in their systems to uh, define where they go. So um, there's some education to do. We know some systems and some authorities have that capability because there's a good number of uh, flexible stops and zones already within NAPTAM, um, but not everywhere has them that has these sort of services. And so we're working with the uh, NAPTAM project uh, to uh, work out how we can encourage uh, better use of flexible zones and we'll need to do uh, some education um, if this is the approach that's taken. And then um, once data starts to be published, then we're going to need to encourage data consumers to use the data and present it properly. Um, most of those that we've spoken to um, don't see it as too big a problem, but um, you know, we want to make sure that uh, as many people as possible uh, are uh, using it properly. So um, where next um, with this work? Um, we've got a draft technical profile. Um, this is designed to be standalone within reference to the current um, uh, BODS PTI profile document. Um, and it will remain that way until there's an update to the uh, to the wider BODS PTI profile. Um, so until 1.2 of that is published at whenever that might be, this will be standalone. Um, but um, hopefully it provides you with enough technical details to understand what we're expecting. Um, so uh, second ask is um, if it doesn't have enough information, uh, then please let us know what more you need. Um, bear in mind that an awful lot of the information needed to create a flexible bus service uses the concepts and data structures within the main profile document. Um, but you know, if there's if there's some information or advice you think is missing, then um, you know, this is why we're doing this consultation. Let's let's know what that is. Let's get it in there so that um, uh, we can uh, we can get it right. Um, in terms of time scales, um, we released the uh, the document um, the end of last month. Um, 
we've got a session today there's a session next week as well um and um we're looking for um feedback from yourselves by the 18th of june um we'll then update the profile uh and re-release it um if there's um a lot of rework because we've got it very wrong then that probably won't happen before the end of june um but um if it's minor stuff um then we aim to get that out before the end of june we'll then uh you know open that up for um any final feedback and things like that and get a uh revised final version out and starts to do the education pieces uh, towards the end of July onwards. Um, and whilst we've been um, developing this up, um, we've been working with the BODS team, so they're already um, trying to get their heads around and working on ways to present uh, flexible services in the portal. Um, to show that to operators. So there's some uh, designs for the user interface uh, and there's some uh, work that's already been taking place on, on validating data at a very uh, high level to make sure that you know the key, the mandated bits of information are provided and that sort of thing. Um, so um, once we've got the data structures um, and format agreed, BODS will be able to move uh, very quickly to support it. So we're not going to be waiting for a very long time. So um, we're looking for feedback. Um, I'm happy to take questions. Um, if you want to uh, let us know any feedback to the consultation, then send it to txcpti at timrivet.co.uk. Try and avoid my normal email address. It's getting a lot of hammering at the moment. Um, and yeah, has anybody got any questions? Yeah, Peter. Yes, yeah, so, uh, it's it's r really good, and I think the um, the be quite a good alignment with the GTFS. Um, so that's that's encouraging. I'm just wondering to what extent, though, we've got the concept of the alternatives that often come up within the booking of flexible transport. If 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 one leg is booked, then the other leg can't be done. There are alternatives. Um, and uh, a lot of what is being expressed is assuming that if you book it, you'll get it, where often the reality is that, sorry, it's it's not available. Um, it's doing something else. And therefore, um, uh, it's, it's now I, I assume that I've always thought that 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 questions of alternatives, whatever, would perhaps come later in through the the real time mechanisms being linked to the the booking systems being linked to the real time mechanisms, perhaps so that you might have these alternatives laid out as uh, some uh, strategies really. Um, but there is a sort of regulatory aspect of it, of course. Um, you, flexible transport if you are putting in more uh, potential journeys in the knowledge that you cannot fulfill them all then there is the um the regulatory side you're only committing to put one vehicle on the road the regulatory did you have that vehicle on the road or not um uh, and uh, i just wonder how those aspects uh, i mean given that this might be also for uh, registration purposes as well in due course uh, maybe that's a step too far but we need to keep bear in mind that the registration aspect may may come um, around what we're doing here yeah so um in theory uh, to pick up that last one um you could use this flexible service structure as part of ebsr um 
no, it's perfectly valid within um, trans exchange schema already. Um, so, um, but going back to the um, um, question about you know, whether you can actually get this, um, the work that KPMG did on Discovery Project uh, in 2021 um, did identify um, a number of potential steps to support flexible services. Um, this would fall under the first of those steps, uh, providing a journey planner with the information so that it has a concept that there's something there, you know, um, rather than just going, this is a blank space on the map. You know, actually, yes, you might be able to get it. And this is the information that you need to know, to, to you know, to take the active step to to make the phone call or to you know to to use the app to see whether you can book a service um and then there is a series of steps that would actually get you potentially to you know the journey planner actually making that booking for you um very few um if any systems you know would support that at the moment um and that's very much getting you towards, you know, mobility as a service type arrangements. Um, and so, you know, rather than jump into that, we're taking the simplest step of, you know, there is something in this area um, that you might be able to get, um, because otherwise you start ruling out some of the some of the operators who might not have you know anything more than just you know a telephone and a bit of paper to to do their scheduling for tomorrow um and we're trying to be as open and as inclusive as possible at this point very helpful thank you Has anybody else got any pressure um just one thing for me tim you'll know my um problem with NAPAN and flexible zones at the moment with the requirements that the guidelines say don't use NAPTAN codes and Google uses NAPTAN codes. Are the DFT considering changing the flexible profiles of, of um, bus stops in NAPTAN? Um, so that's one to direct to the NAPTAN project but i know um it has been the subject of various conversations um and um i think i saw dr j on the call i know that they were having conversations with google fairly recently hello dr j hello hello i thought i'd quickly pop in trisha that's a really good point um I was not 100% aware of that i think that's a piece of information that's run across between the time when I was off um, from February, uh, no, from whatever it was, uh, d d July to February. So um, it's good to know. We do have a conversation with Google coming up, so it'd be great. I'll take it in there, and it'd be great if anyone's got any problems coding up flexible stops to let us know. The other thing that I will say, <clears throat> um, in NAPTAN, because of PII information that's in some of the old notes, we strip the notes field out when we publish it. So uh, that's one of the things that we've had to do because historically there was a there was a, an amount of PII information. So don't put any notes in to your NAPTAN and expect anyone downstream to see them. And I just wanted to remind everyone of that. That's slightly different from BODs, but because there's been PII information put in, to ensure that we're a secure, responsible GDPR compliance service, we've had to strip the notes field out. So I just wanted to make people aware of that. If you were going to do some kind of work around the type in information, NAPTAN's not the place for it. No, I don't use the notes field at all. But um, what I've done with my flexible zones is the, the name of them is not bus on demand because that's what we're called. And then the street is just demand responsive area. Um, but I have some I have some live data in Travel Line at the moment on a semi-fixed route where it operates from 
one of the main towns to a village and then beyond that village you have to book at least two hours in advance um on an hourly service um but i haven't got my new i've got four new fully flexible zones running off an app where you can wait anything from up to from five minutes up to an hour for a service um and that is a well we have one zone that is fully flexible you can travel anywhere within the zone and then we have a few other zones where it is fully flexible if you count the villages but we will only drop you off at the rail stations and bus stations in the town um because we have a lot of town services running around and we didn't want people hopping on and hopping off <laughs> and taking the buses up so um so yeah we've um we've we're running what are we running now so we're running four operating zones two vehicles per zone um and one of those zones where off we're running a fixed commuter run within that as well so um between peak times there's a fixed run um that we may we're running it we're running it as a contract for now um but depending on what the demand is on the drt for fixed times we might take one of the vehicles out of service during that peak time and move it in so it's all very new to me and all a bit crazy going on at the moment yeah. we're, we're scoping our fifth zone so it's going it's going mad in nottinghamshire for drt <laughs> trisha yeah. um what i might do is set up a conversation with you me hannah and haraj mm -hmm. and anyone else who wants to have a conversation just to kind of dig into some of the flex problems and mm -hmm. how you're coding them up now um because we're aware that everyone's doing it slightly differently because what a surprise on Naptan, everyone, there's 147 <laughs> people and there's 147 different ways of, of um, I was going to say skinning this cat, of making this thing happen is perhaps the best way of describing it. So um, um, come and have a chat with us. We're going to run once Tim has finished their consultation, we're going to have to, to run some to ensure that Naptan's fully up and especially when Tim says there are some people who can't put these into their systems we need to know who those people are so we can help you figure out ways around it so come and have a chat with us doors always open um, and I'll leave I'll, I'll let Tim go back to running his meeting and I'll go back on mute <laughs> thank um, you my, my second thing was just a follow-up to what um Peter mentioned um Again, some of our operating zones have this weird situation in there where um, we always tell them that nobody should wait more than 60 minutes for a bus. So the contracted network that we removed operated the alternate hour to a commercial network. Um, so our so during specific hours, we will always direct them to the commercial network rather than the DRT. So it, ha it has frustrated some people because they'd rather get on our bus than go around every village on the commercial bus. Um, but I'm just wondering how um, how BODS will handle that um, in a sense of, you know, if you book this hour, you can use the DRT, but if you book the next one, you we'll, we'll send you here. I mean, people have cottoned on, people will go to, go to Retford bus station, wait for the 95 to go, and then go onto our app and book the DRT, and then it turns up in ten minutes and gets there before the ninety-five does. Um, so people aren't aren't stupid, but yeah, it's just an interesting way of how they'll handle that. So I would use. Oh right, how do I do this? How do I go back? So um, the um, service periods is probably the way to handle that so um you could have um service periods you know on alternate hours you'd end up with a few service periods but um that's probably that my immediate thought about how to handle that yeah. but it's only certain very villages will have that because so, our, so, so our zone's quite big um and it's it's the north of the zone that would only have that um some villages can they can book it every hour because they have no alternative yeah so you can have you can have overlapping zones and things like that so you can have mm -hmm. one zone you know that that's entirely part of another zone um mm -hmm. and so you might need to think about that but um let's have a 
conversation about it um, outside of this to uh, to work it out. OK, um, Aidan. Hi, Tim. Um, you talked about uh, timelines there. I just wondered if you had any timelines for implementation. Um, so, um, yeah, th this is for the, you know, for, for the for the format and things like that in terms of implementation um no it's not statutory information for operators um so it's a this will be purely voluntary data for operators um but i think everyone that we've talked to um as we've gone round um, talking to people has been going, we want to be able to provide this as quickly as possible. Um, so, you know, this isn't like, you know, regular bus services where the open bus regulations required compliance by a certain date. This is this is voluntary supply. Um, trying to sort out the gap in the network coverage and things like that. OK, thank you. Um, another question. Um, for those that don't use software solutions, I don't know if the DFT solution still exists, the old spreadsheet, but it is if is there support for those that don't use software solutions that will be able to handle flexible services? Uh, those conversations are taking place. Um, there isn't at the moment, but conversations are going on. Thank you. Anybody else got any questions? No. Nope. In which case, um, I will um, PDF up the slides and send them round uh, and also send a link to the recording once it's processed, which uh, might be Monday. Um, and uh, yeah, please do um, get in contact with your thoughts, positive or negative, um, on this because we want to get it right. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Have a good rest of the day.